For many years, anyone wanting to play games on their Mac has been left with two choices. Either accept the reduced performance and reduced choice of games under OS X, or use Bootcamp to install Windows on a separate partition, just to use as a game launcher. Apple's new Metal API, announced for macOS in 2015, was specifically designed to remedy this and to replace the old OpenGL API, which on Apple was stuck at version 4.1, released all the way back in 2010. So, how does Metal compare to DirectX on the Windows in terms of performance? Can you finally game on macOS in 2019? To find out, I ran some Metal supporting games on the macOS 10.14 and Windows 10 on the same hardware. First, at the low end, a 2015 MacBook Pro with a 2.9 GHz i5 and Iris 6100 integrated graphics. And at the higher end, a Hackintosh with an i5 8400 and Radeon RX 570, which is the same GPU used in the base 5K iMac. Starting with Total War Saga, Thrones of Britannia, Released in 2018, under macOS on the Hackintosh, the game surprised me by actually running a bit faster than under Windows. At least to begin with. At 1080p on the high detail preset, the game was at over 90 frames per second on macOS, compared to the high 70s in Windows 10. However, once the action moved inside the city, with lots of particle effects and heat haze distortion, the macOS frame rate fell apart with Windows beating it by a significant margin. On the MacBook Pro, at 1280x800 and the lowest detail preset, the frame rates are consistently bad on both operating systems, with Windows beating macOS by a couple of frames. Overall, at 1080p in high detail, Windows is about one frame per second faster. Moving up to 1440p, however, Windows lead increases to almost 12 frames per second, while at 4K resolution the difference is 7 frames per second. On the MacBook Pro at the lowest detail setting, the overall difference is about 2 frames per second. For the next game I tried Rise of the Tomb Raider, released in 2016 on Windows and on macOS in 2018. Running at high detail on the Hackintosh under macOS and Windows, the game looks identical but the Windows version is noticeably smoother. On the MacBook Pro, even at the lowest detail setting in 1280x800, the game is predictably slow on both. Overall, at high detail in 1080p, Windows is about 10 frames per second faster. At 1440p, it's 9 frames per second faster, and at 4K, 5 frames per second faster. On the MacBook Pro, Windows again is slightly better at almost 2 frames per second faster. For the final game I tested, Total War Warhammer. Released for macOS in April 2017, this was among the first Metal supporting games to appear on the Mac. On the RX 570 Hackintosh at high detail in 1080p, Windows was 15 frames per second faster, at 1440p, 9 frames per second faster, and at 4K the gap was around 4 frames per second. On the MacBook Pro, meanwhile, in 1280x800 at the lowest detail setting, macOS managed 17.4 frames per second compared to Windows 20.5, a difference of around 3 frames per second. Overall then, on average, across the different resolutions, Thrones of Britannia was 10.6% faster on Windows, Rise of the Tomb Raider was 12.5% faster, and Warhammer was 14.5% faster. So it's clear then, if you want the best possible gaming performance, installing Windows on your Mac is still going to be essential. That said, Metal is still a vast improvement over the old OpenGL API on macOS. The Unigine Valley benchmark, for example, is around 25% faster on Windows than macOS, while Total War Attila, the last Total War game on the Mac still using OpenGL is around 30% faster on Windows. Some other games are much worse. Civilization 6, for example, 
runs two to three times faster on the same hardware under Windows as under Mac OS. While it's still work to do, what Metal has accomplished so far is reduce the average performance gap from 30 to 50 percent to 12 to 15 percent. The problem that Apple have, of course, is that even a 15 percent frame rate improvement is enough incentive for gamers to install Windows, thereby reducing the market for Mac games. Hopefully, with future updates, it will continue to improve, and as developers become more familiar with the API, the difference should narrow further. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.